thrilled, Miss Penguin. <gasps> the Raven's heir. Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Harold? Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... the Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off. He's gonna steal the Eye. But how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him. Do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... What? Halt! Stop! You're under arrest! have time to play. I'm on duty. <laughs> You're funny, but you don't look like a real cop. You don't even have a revolver. What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, but my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. And what's with the gun? What do you need it for? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. Nor do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre, and those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was. Although, I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels.
You do know these days there are thieves far more dangerous than your old raven. Two days ago, a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And do you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Inspector Legrand, it's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But, monsieur, surely I can be of assistance, somehow. I saw a safe being loaded. We have everything under control. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? you're looking for someone. You're just guessing. If I were looking for someone, I wouldn't spend the trip cooped up in a freight car, now would I? Well, that would seem to indicate that you're guarding something. And what might it be? I really couldn't say. But it must be very important. Why is that? Because you are very important. They wouldn't have assigned the case to you if it were just a trifle. <laughs> Let's assume that we really are transporting something very important on this train. And let's assume that it really is my job to see that it arrives safely. Then why isn't the train crawling with police? You don't want to arouse attention. Evido. But why not? It's... it's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well, that is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We'll get along fine without you. You won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You're in my country. And I've been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do. Whether you like it or not. Hmm. Clever and stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zana. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? <sighs> oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself. You were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa! It was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. 
That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. This morning I thought I wouldn't be hungry because of all the excitement. Thankfully I bought a sandwich with me anyway. excited this morning that I couldn't eat anything. Needless to say, the second I got into train, I was famished. Fortunately, I bought an apple. the sandwich paper. That way I can carry it without making a mess of my trouser pocket. Still, I'd prefer not to have to carry them all day. The napkin came with the croissant I bought at the train station. A guilty pleasure. I don't need that either. table has its own waste basket. Practical. No need to ever leave your seat. All right, 